Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. You were expecting a song and I didn't give it to you. Sorry. I didn't have one. I got like a little song in my heart. It's like a it's like a 90s grunge song. It's like sort of sad and a little melancholy. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Today we're paying up Claw. He's not sad. He's awesome. He's really cool. Um, um, I don't really, I kind of have an idea what I want to do today. I think we're going to do him in black and white with a little color. Does that sound interesting? You know what else? I feel like the color would point out some visual interest. I think so. Yeah, we'll do some visual interest. So I'm just going to, let's just kick it to the camera and just start going. <laughs> just, yeah, just, just, I got a little grunge song in my heart. Like a, like a, like a grunge song, but unplugged version. And you're like, it really resonates with you, but also you're just like, yeesh, that's a little sad. And I'm not sad. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I feel the, I feel the 90s grunge today. I feel my whole heart trying to know anything about grunge right now. <laughs> and you're on your own, bud. I'm so sorry. Look, today during playtest, I was playing grunge music uh, for, for playtest. So that, that's, that's where this all came from. I mixed a little black and red, and I'm just going to slap it on this claw. We're going to go with a different color scheme. I'm going to just do something fun. This is our second day in the red zone. Oh, yeah. Chick did red yesterday. We're going to do some red, and then I think I'm going to turn the red black. Oh no, the the Seattle has not changed my my music. The the I, the Seattle accentuated what is already there. I, I grew I grew up. I, I was the I was the right age for the breaking of grunge. There is a random Gamora on the table. I don't even know why. Do you know why? Should I tell you why? Why? I have no idea why. <clears throat> I just, I, mean, I was just sort of making it up. I was like, maybe, maybe after yesterday's stream and Schick pointing out that if you want to learn about OSL, you have to tune in today. That would show some OSL. And I was like, well, I should bring something that like really can focus on some OSL if we can make it to the time though. Time is always. Time is the enemy. It is. It's all we got though too. And yet all we need is love. And in the end it all, it's all that really matters. So this is black and red mixed together. I like how just rich and dark this is. It's a very saturated red, so it's got a lot of punch. I don't care if I'm messy right now. I'm just going to... Uh, one of my paint teachers, one of my paint masters, one of the, one of the people who taught me, uh, taught me sometimes you just do paint smash. It's literally just smashing paint on the miniature that first layer because all you're trying to do is just cram color into the miniature and just get get that first coat and it just doesn't matter you just you just paint smashing sometimes I like to go back to that just paint smash big old brush and not a care in my heart This is the exact same uh, claw that we built on stream a couple weeks ago. It's been sitting there waiting, calling. When are you gonna paint me? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe soon. Oh boy, what do we got going on? Yeah, when things, yeah, you know, MCP's in the works. There's lots of MCP coming. There's lots of uh, Legion coming. It's just, you know, right now, 
you got to get a new game has to have support and you got to have the stuff to play it and that's very vital to the overall health of the games I bet news is coming though. Spoiler, news is coming, right? Spoiler, news is coming. So this was a little choppy. So That's Dallas, funny. let me ask you, what sort of goes into your mind, go, goes through your mind when you are trying to decide what the starting point for painting black is because we've heard you say don't paint black with black but how do you choose that undertone hmm. uh, live as just artists so well so how do you choose the under you have a microphone now right that's all right yeah because I, I was i noticed yesterday you can really hear your questions um on stream i loved it um yeah so i try to just choose what's going to be appropriate for the character. So like this character is naturally a red colored character. So I want that red undertone. So this is actually going to end up being a black bodysuit with a red undertone. So I'm just going to build in some red first. And then the echo I think is going to be blue, but, but mainly white. So it's going to be like a white echo with a splash of blue in it, uh, which, which is really going to make it uh, sort of ethereal and distant. So really just kind of thinking about color and the way color is going to work and interact with each other. Um, black, I do like chromatic black, so I like putting color in my black. Um, it just makes it more visually interesting than like a, sometimes it's appropriate just to use gray, um, but you know. You didn't realize till now he has three left hands. Yeah, it's like a little echo of the hands. It's a fun little, fun little add-on. There's lots of all the things, yeah. Let's do the echo as we wait for our red to dry up. I'm gonna use a little blue and a little white. I'm gonna mix it together. I'm gonna to go really heavy on the white. So I think the goal here, <clears throat> should the white be closer to the red or should the white be further from the red? So if you do blue here, going into white, and then the red's coming out, pretty interesting. But if I put the blue here fading, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna go the opposite way. I didn't that bring... also kind of reminds me of a lot of your lessons about heat, heat. and you know the, the center of something being hot and therefore being white. Mm -hmm. So the central point where they meet, where they're parting makes sense. Yeah, and this is gonna provide that contrast, like that red and blue next to each other. And I'm not gonna detail this echo. I'm, I'm actually gonna try to purposely not over detail the echo. I want a nice sort of almost ghostly effect and we might put some texture in it here and there. And I want it to feel real ethereal. I'm really just trying something new. Let's do, let's make a wash. No one got mad at you. We just can't talk about it. Do I have resting grumpy face? I feel like I got resting grumpy face. I do, don't I, Ann? I get, I get. Everybody thinks I'm grumpy when I'm not. I just have, the, I just have that protruding brow. Yeah, I think sometimes you just gotta learn, people. I'm a little Gen Xy too. <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm, I got one foot, I'm, well, I got both feet squarely in Gen X. I have that, I have that Gen X attitude and I'm trying to be better about it. Like, yep, that's what we did. Yep, that's what you did. Come on. 
Oh yeah, this is gonna be super cool. There's all that grunge music, it's true. So much grunge music. Even the post grunge. I noticed there's a bunch of folks asking about when we'll do announcements and how far we are from talking about more things. And we know everybody's super excited to hear it all, but one of the reasons we moved to a format for Adepticon where we announced a whole bunch is y'all know what the pipeline is, even though if you don't know exactly how soon parts of it are coming. So, you know, you can expect that a few times a year we'll do that kind of thing and we'll find the appropriate venues to do it so that we can sort of build a communication with you guys about what's what's coming but you'll still have to wait till the announcements to figure out when exactly things are coming along yeah because there's nothing worse than giving a date and not being able to hit the date right so in, in making sure that we can hit the date is way more important than talking early little blue I'm a claw boy. Got a little red on that one bit there, but that's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's add a little more of this punchy blue. I'm gonna go underneath, sort of creating like a bit of a shadow in the echo. If it gets a little heavy handed, I'm gonna use that second brush to sort of wick it away. I don't want this to get too heavy, but I want some little more blue in places. All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. What do you, what song do you think Claw's using for a sonic web? Oh, I do like the idea of him just using some obscure 1978 B-side punk song. It was like his sonic blast. Or like a, a sick like G sharp to E minor like Dissonant chord of boom. Come on, and you can appreciate the G sharp to E minor. It's a bop. All right, we're going to start blending black over this. Find the shadows and blend it out because I want the suit to be sort of black with that tinge of red underneath. We're just having fun with this today. Um, if you joined in while we were building this uh, claw, I brought in the painted one that we used on stream to play a game with, me and Josh. What a great game. Love playing a game with Josh. And uh, I got to use Claw in that game. Super exciting. Absolutely love this character and this card. I should have brought my painted one in. I, I, I can't believe I forgot it. Foolish. I think this dark red against this light blue is going to look pretty slick. Well, you know what? There needs to be a little red in there. Let's put a little red in that. For that first blend. Also, we forgot the top of his head. How 
How dare we? And I think once you get the red painted, I think we want to put some of that blue in the uh, places where he's not fully formed. Oh yeah, Jimmy, that's good. I would like to posit share as a potential sound oh. rest. Oh. The the one where she uses the uh the well what's it called? The vocal thing. What's that vocal thing called? The pitch tuner, the auto tune. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't oh, no. sure where you were going with that. I, I, have you ever seen the movie Mars Attacks? And they, uh, yes, I love that movie. And they use the, yodel, that, the yodeling song. That's what he's blasting. Just some sick yodels. Like, Claus is like, I'm here to steal a vibranium. Yo, yodel, yodel, yo. You were expecting me to actually yodel, and I didn't. Can I yodel? I don't think I've tried yodeling since I was like 10. There's really only one way to find out, Dallas. Oh no, not on stream. I think I'd have to hear a yodel first to remind myself exactly how the heck you yodel. Just sing through the Lonely Goat Herd from Sound of Music. Oh god. And gosh. then get right there. I don't think I could tell you how that song goes. I've imitated a didgeridoo on stream, but I don't I've, I don't think I've ever tried to yodel. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I want to flip him upside down so bad, Ann. But alas, I cannot. Painting on stream is definitely hard mode with the gimbal, for it sure. It is super hard mode. Uh, when we were trying to get under the vestments on Mother Talzin yesterday, it seemed like kind of a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, the gimbal is not my friend. Trust me, my desk at home does not have a gimbal. My desk in my office does not. I'm a black there, I'm a black home there. That hand needs some black. Almost a wash right there. A little stretching out. a little darker. I just want little peaks of that red poking out. Yeah, I like that. I 
Okay, now we're going to go back to the Sonic Echo. I think. Let me start covering up the paint blockers. Start working some more color on there. Love the way this miniature is just broken up, just cascading together. A little sonic echo. Jimmy so, the Hand says that they liked your uh, video with Gamers Guild talking about the past, present, and future of the worthy. Oh, yeah, that was fun. The future of the worthy. I'm looking forward to next year. Because I think it's going to be bigger and better. It was, it was nice finally getting to pull off the worthy. Um, as a project we've been working on for literally four years. And so finally getting to pull that off was just wonderful. And seeing everybody come out and participate and bring the, just their A game. But... You know, I think I think it was really nice because we really got to showcase what what it means to be, you know, painting for a competition and sort of what the judges are looking for. So hopefully everybody got inspired. I know I was inspired. I was immediately inspired. I went home and painted um, immediately after Adepticon. You know? All those painting competitions and seeing them online like always gets me stoked and reminds me like, you know, about my journey and about what I'm trying to accomplish with painting miniatures, right? Everybody's got different things they're trying to accomplish with painting miniatures. Eric Attack is asking about news on the new website. Guys, it is still in development. Um, we are working really hard to get that website done and it's very exciting. As to your other question, we do not have any current plans about pursuing any you know official roster builders for things um so that's that's not something you would be getting through us on the website i think crisis protocol and SharePoint are my favorite games to build rosters for is because it's like just pick 10 Pick eight, done. Boop. There's definitely something to be said for just being able to, you know, spend spend some time thinking about synergies and, you know, how you want your abilities to line up. But just being able to kind of show up and put stuff on the table and get going. And there's room for all types of things, but those are things that make those two games sing for sure. Synergy? The only synergy I need is sin and crossbones. Okay. I want to do the exact same thing on the interior of Mr. Claw. Sonic Blue, Echo for you.
think the trim of his boots and gloves will be black black. This arm as well, since it's an echo. Oh, a new panther or killmonger from the rivals? Wanna see those painted up? Sure. Maybe when we're closer to release or something? Who knows what will happen, right? This is being very careful using the tip of my brush. I want this to be pretty glowy. That Rivals panel convinced you to get into Wakanda. Wow. Pretty good. not bonk the red hand with the brush but I can't turn him upside down okay let's highlight the red mm. Oh, M'Baku is awesome. We played M'Baku on stream as well, didn't we? Yes. Just got to play M'Baku. That was the game against Claw we were talking about. So fun. I'm going to put a little red ink in this mix too to really punch up the red. I think it just went little... Some little highlights. Maybe a slight blend here and there. This is super thin because it inks. So I'm just letting it build up. To bring some of that punch into the shape of the costume. Sort of what Shik was talking about yesterday. Sort of the same thing with OSL, right? Like, 
sometimes you just need a couple layers to slowly build into it. You don't need to go just boom, highlight. So I wanna make sure I don't overdo it. So I'm just sort of pulling back a little, letting a couple thin layers do its work. So I can really control the amount of highlighting on this. Yeah, I think there's all kinds of ways to paint claw. So we wanted to really explore something today a little different. That's why I just had to go with this black red. And the tip of the brush do the work. Uh, yeah, a little bit like the daredevil that was painted on stream. Let's go back to the echo parts, a little blue. I'm going to lay some of that darker blue over the light blue. I'm going to keep it toward the edges for that separation line. Add it back to what we worked on earlier on the main echo. So many, so many spots where he's just peeling away from reality. some white and just a touch of blue. And I want I think I want irregular highlights. Sort of shapes and flows. Kind of tells that immaterial in this story. place I don't like. And then my 
if you can do some more irregular shapes inside the, this echo. Kind of create like a static electricity sort of feel to it. Does that make sense? I'm just sort of making it up. Once again, see there's a little dark there. I want to push that light next to the dark. Light next to dark creates contrast. This one's I feel like it's moving. It's just in 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 motion like it's twisting and churning spend a lot of time on the echo. I think less I think less can be more here in this situation. I don't need to go crazy and paint it. You can of course. I look forward to speaking of the worthy. I look forward to seeing a claw in the worthy. I think this mentor provides so many opportunities for some unique paint jobs. Aside from claw, what, uh -oh. uh, which, I guess, miniature that's been announced for MCP since Adepticon mm -hmm. would be most inspiring to you uh, if you were going to enter the Worthy next year? Oh, what would Dallas paint for the Worthy? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sorry to put you on the spot, bud. Uh, let's think. I mean, I might go back to my other idea that I skipped for this last year, which was a Wolverine piece. Um, I think Luke Cage has a lot of potential. versus Hulk would be cool. I mean, that's just always. Oh, I should have really brought my artist titanium white for this project. Just going in with more white, more white highlights. Just building up that white. I 
Oh, so many options, isn't there? Does this need a little touch of green? I think it does. I'm going to use a little turquoise. A little touch of turquoise ink. We'll put a little touch of turquoise ink here and there just to add some a little more depth to the white blue situation. Some of that turquoise in this part too. Especially if we can drag it out. A little right over top of that, a little bit of turquoise is going to hum. I always find when I'm doing blue effects, I like a little turquoise in there because it gives it a lot of uh, energy and life. Focus of that turquoise right there. I think I'll buy the neck too. Yeah, Sorcerer Supreme Strange, really good for dioramas. Really good for, I think that's a really good, worthy entry. Uh, the miniature just provides a lot of story and heart. It needs to be upside down. <laughs> Spider foes have some amazing sculpts. Uh, let's make a flesh tone red, yellow, white. One more yellow. Let's stick a little touch of green in there. Way less. Um, bo -bo -bo -bo. that weird like almost plastic like face cold and emotional oh what kind of questions anybody got any questions He's letting me paint. I'm not used to that. Just let him paint. I want a lot more punch. 
little red, a little uh, orange, and some or orange ink. Need some cleanup, but work on for where they got one third of their way and it just trail sort of trail. Oh well, yeah. I have an idea for a Wolverine piece. I've had this idea for a Wolverine piece for like four years. Um, but. I don't know, like, I think there's so many opportunities. What I would paint for the worthy is always, like, I really want to put a lot of thought into that. So off the cuff is, is a little harder for me. Um, because the choosing of the miniature for the worthy for any paint competition is just as important as the execution. Um, the wrong miniature, even painted to a high standard, won't won't tell the right story or do the right thing. So the artist really wants to connect with something. You know, I've done pieces in the past where I'm like, you know, I got an idea, but it's a soft idea, and my heart's not fully in it. And uh, you can tell. So... You know, it's such a, it's such a make sure you get it right kind of moment. Um, so like I said, I got an idea for a Wolverine worthy piece. Um, uh, definitely some spider foes stand out. Um, I think we talked a little bit about the worthy after Adepticon. Did we talk about like who I was surprised to not see? Or who I was surprised to see? I need to think about that again. I don't I don't think we really did talk about in depth about like the most uh used miniatures or anything like that. Yeah, interesting, right? Like, I was, oh man, what was the one I was surprised to see a lot of? I'm trying to remember now. There was a, there was a miniature at the Worthy, and I was just like, oh, there's a lot of that. That's amazing. You know, not in a bad way, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they picked that. But like, oh, wow, I just, I just wouldn't, wouldn't have expected it. That's amazing. I have, to, I, have to, I have to go back through the entries. By the way, I'm just doing a red glaze again to bring out more red in those highlights, but the black is still going to be black. <laughs> and there was a lot of Mysterios. There was a lot of Mysterios. Uh, if you can't make it to Adepticon, can you have a friend drop off, pick up? No, you need to be there for, you need to be in attendance to enter. You have to enter. You have to be the one to win the thing. And Dallas, can you talk a little bit about why that is? Because there, there are important reasons for why, aside from just you need to come. Oh, what if I break it? it? Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Um, you know, you just, it's, it's a painting competition and, you know, it's part of the convention and that's very important to remember that it's part of the convention. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just as much about being there and participating and 
being available if anything were to happen to your miniature. Um, you know, and the most important part, what if you win? I, I need a picture of you holding up Odin. Like, I want to give you the Odin. I don't want to give your friend the Odin and take a picture of your friend. And there's also the aspect in a lot of folks in chat who, who did enter um, would be able to tell you that Dallas and the other judges put, put a lot of time into feedback. Yeah, the feedback aspect is huge. Like that's the, the worthy is built around feedback and getting feedback and having feedback available. Um, so if you're not there to, to get the feedback, if you're not there to participate, then it's that that's what that's what the worthy is about. It's it's really participation in community, right? And somebody mentioned earlier the Gamers Guild um, did an interview with Dallas about the Worthy and about you know what it was like to to put on the Worthy and judge and provide feedback. But I believe one of the things they also did was ask Dallas to provide feedback on their miniature during um, the interview, right? Which they had received in person, but it was a great way for you all to see kind of the actionable feedback that you can get if you choose to take on this quest. Yeah, we, uh, I, I gave uh, the Gamers Guild, uh, Nate, some feedback at Adepticon, and then uh, we went on the, the, his podcast, and I redid it, and boy, oh boy, talk about the hardest thing for me, remembering anything past 20 minutes ago. Um, I'm, look, and I'm a busy boy, and uh, I have a lot on my brain, so I got it's like it's 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 in and out, it's in and out. I was impressed with what you remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was surprised at what I was able to remember. So like going back and being able to give that feedback is so vital. It's 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 part of your growth and part of your journey. And well, I hope you couldn't hurt my tummy. My tummy gurgled. Um, it's so important uh, that we're all. You know, we're all on this journey together and we're just all on different points of the same path. And we want to, you know, we want to be there and support and help each uh, miniature painter grow in in their uh, in their hobby and achieve the level they want to achieve. And the whole worthy is based around trying to provide that in an actionable way. You know, actionable feedback is the only feedback, well, I'm going to get sassy here in a moment. You ready? Um, the only feedback that matters is actionable feedback. Critique without, um, critique with, pointless critique is pointless, basically, right? Um, and so we try to, we try to always remember to give actionable feedback. And, um, you know, feedback grounded in, um, you know, the background of the judge's art and, you know, miniature painting history and all that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's always a little subjective, of course. Well, and to hard. Stryker's point, a point um, about not being able to take and apply feedback, I mean, that's... I would say, I mean, Dallas certainly could speak to the fact that that's part of the the fun of it is learning to receive and apply. It, it doesn't happen overnight, but this is a way to practice. Oh, holy cow! We're gonna get whoa! We're gonna get sassy. Oh, well, I'm me, ready. You get me on the sassy stuff. Uh, <laughs> doing something for 20 years, or 10 years, or 30 years. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing something. If you haven't asked the question on why you're not as good, and it doesn't matter how good you are, you can be the best in the world. You should still be asking how to be better. If you're not asking the questions on, and, and understanding that there is always feedback and criticism, then you, then you haven't learned anything. So time doesn't mean you've learned anything. You have to, you have to ask questions. You have to create conversation. You have to create an openness and willingness to be understanding of feedback 
And also, you have to understand how to give feedback and receive feedback. It, that, like like Ann said, I said, it's super important to learn how to take criticism. Um, you know, we make games and we make art, so internally there's always that like, oh, well, you could have done this, you could have done this. There's always criticism back and forth between the teams to help make each other better, stronger, you know, tougher, faster, leaner, meaner, higher, further, farther, um, you know, and, and so there's always feedback. So learning how to give and receive feedback is super important. And sometimes it's a matter of like, okay, well, the judge told me this and I see what they're saying and I disagree with it, but I see why they said that. And I, I need to take it into consideration on the next piece. That doesn't mean I need to do it, but take it into consideration and understand why the feedback was given, right? I also have a rule where I never take criticism or, or I never take advice from somebody I want to take, or I never take criticism from somebody I want to take advice from. But that's a different topic altogether. Um, it served me quite well because everybody's quick with criticism. Yeah, and I know sometimes, sometimes my, sometimes my, sometimes my answers are a little pithy, and I'm I'm fully aware of that. I'm a pithy guy. Um, but my object, my my point is never to to say get good. It's to you have the potential. Believe in the me that believes in you. Um, and let's work together to get there. Have a conversation, and let's talk about stuff. I don't know if Josh is watching, but Josh knows. Like, uh, uh, let me let's have the conversation. What what's going to get you there? What's going to get you there quickest? They're not necessarily quick. Uh, you should never be looking for magic bullets. The other thing is being able to ask follow-up questions if you don't understand what the feedback is. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, get, I get on tears in the studio when somebody asks questions. I'm just like, well, let's dissect that. No, let's dissect that. And everybody's like, oh, gosh, I'm just ready to go to the next meeting. I'm like, no, let's, have, let's, let's dissect that a moment. Look at him. You know what? This is like 90% done. What do you think? How do we feel about it? Yay, nay? You know, so yeah. honestly, the first claw I saw was the one that we that we photographed, right? Um, but this is the first one where I can actually tell the like where claw is in the miniature because of the ch the color choice. Mm hmm um, at least, like, immediately. Like, I can tell where Claw is. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the original, I was like, my mind is being blown. This is such a wild sculpt. Um, and both are valid. But that's what I like about this one. Yeah, and I think that that's sort of what was in the back of my mind when thinking about this color scheme is, uh, you know, the studio one painted by Aaron Lovejoy. Uh, the one you saw when we... Uh, we're building claw painted by me we're very much trying to lean into that where does one end and where does one begin so philosophically the notion was the the saturation levels right um and having claw uh proper be highly saturated and the echo be desaturated to create the contrast and uh, you know I, I think that that's a fascinating way to look at it but like you said it's not the only way to look at it there's multiple ways to create visual interest and I think this was sort of my you know one hour attempt at like this is just another approach to the same conundrum right Every miniature asks questions. It's kind of, sort of like playing a game, right? When you play a game of Marvel Christ Protocol, you have several things asking you questions. 
your your roster ask you a question, your opponent ask you questions, and the terrain ask you questions, and and then the um, the scenario ask you questions. And the more strategic and better you are at the game, the more of those questions you can answer, right? Asymmetrical asymmetrical terrain to me is more uh, tactical because it makes me think more about how to deal with it. it. And the better I can deal with it, the better I am at the game, the deeper understanding. My opponent asking me a lot of questions, and I don't mean how many power do you have left, it's the, 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 the strategy questions. Asking me those questions and thinking about it, that the, the scenario being wildly weird and um, you know, maybe a little lopsided. Ask me a question to play different, not play a spreadsheet. Um, and that's sort of what painting's like. It's like there's the, the miniature is asking you so many questions, and there's so many different ways to answer it. Right? There's every painter is going to approach this a different way, and that's okay. This goes back to our philosophy of these paint streams in the first place. I'm not trying to teach you what to paint right a lot of a lot of teachers out there are going to teach you what to paint put this color blue on this shade it with this color blue highlight with this color um, and that's not my goal my goal is to teach you how to paint so it doesn't matter what you're painting it doesn't matter what color you choose it doesn't matter what paint you use it's it's about technique and thinking about it you know, I, I can't teach everybody how to paint every version of claw. So we're just going to talk about some philosophical stuff. And then you can apply that to how you want to paint your claw. And, you know, today was like, well, I don't want to do the desaturation. Maybe you don't understand desaturation as much as you want to. Uh, you're still learning it. Great. That's good. Um, you know. So let's do high contrast. Okay, well, what's high contrast? Red and blue. Red and blue. You know? And we put a little saturation in there. Well, we kind of got saturation all over. Love it. Um, I love really saturated looks. Um, so we kind of just thinking about light and dark at this point and really dividing the elements. So that was sort of the philosophy of the day. And thinking about that and thinking about how to apply that over any miniature in this can be any miniature it goes back to our whole you know there's multiple types of contrast 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 this is three c's of painting um, it's the most important part of painting is contrast uh, and there's different layers or types of contrast there's light dark there's warm cold there's saturated desaturated you know there's so many different ways to explain contrast so the more of those you can put in your tool belt the more of those that you wield, even if you never wield one of them, right? You still have in your tool belt, tool belt and you know how to use it. Um, object source lighting. I might not always use object source lighting, but knowing how to use it. Non-metallic metal. I may not always use non-metallic metal, but I know how to use it. And then that way when I do need to use it, right? You open up the toolbox, you reach inside, you take it out, and you wield it. You wield it like the sword of power or a pick of destiny, or, you know, whatever. Woo! Did, did I get a little too out of the control there? Sorry. Yeah, not everybody's on the same level, and that's okay. We're all on different points of the same path. I've gone for an hour and five minutes. I'm 90% done. What am I going to finish? I'm going to finish highlighting the black, and I'm going to sharpen it up. I'm going to clean it up, because i got a little places where the black needs to be tight-lined. Um, I think the red needs one more punch. And then the sonic weapon needs to be finished. And then I think maybe another highlight of white on the Echo, uh, especially out here. I want to get some like artistic titanium white and really just bing those white highlights on this edge. Not so much here. Let me use a paintbrush. Here, not so much here. This, see that swoop, mm, that beautiful swoop. This swoop, no highlight. This highlight, this bright highlights. Um, and I think we got ourselves a nice alternate version of claw painted up. Not bad for an hour. Hour and 30 minutes, we're going to be done with this fella. Killing it. And he's going to steal some vibranium. That's what's going to happen. <laughs>
Nobody's talking. I'm, I'm just jabbing over here. Okay, ready? Super ready. Oh, we're super ready? Yeah, we're there. Okay, awesome. Thanks for joining us. I love doing that. Thanks for joining us. Remember, every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we hang out here on Twitch. We hang out in a thing called Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. That's what you just watched. You should tell your grandma about it because your grandma's right and she probably bakes you cookies. My grandma made me pies. Um, and then if you want to know about the latest news, information, and announcements coming from Atomic Mass, you should check us out on Twitter and or Instagram because that's where we hang out and we post cool stuff like previews and information. So until next week, next week, no, there's no, ah, oh, there's no shows next week. Next week's a holiday. Yeah. We got to go celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going yeah. to grill hot dogs. I'm going to build some terrain. Well, I'm going to build some terrain, but I'm also going to grill hot dogs. I think we're going to do cheese dogs and slice them in half and then put them on the grill and they get really, look at your face, and then nice. they get really crispy. Oh, they're Ooh. so good. Mm. Don't grill your terrain, though. Not my terrain. No, not at all. So until next time, we'll see you later. Be heroes, go be heroic, go be a superhero person.